Hello Tubesters, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Today we've got another model unboxing, yes I will get around to actually building something uh, someday. But uh, we're going to be looking at a 1 in 1 4 4 scale uh, Japanese uh, flying boat. And it's the Kawanishi, I want to make sure, the Kawanishi Type 97, so off, that's what they call it. Uh, this is a trumpeter, uh, I think it's the H6K uh, and that's better known to Allied reporting name as Mavis uh, and it was superseded mid-war term uh, by the uh, is it the Emily which is the H6 the H8K so uh, this was a, uh, a flying boat connecting you know some of the the islands not just of, of the home islands of Japan, but obviously further out in the, in the Japanese uh, mandated islands and things like that uh, before the war. So flew in civilian, uh, civilian guys and like a lot of flying boats were then later adopted by the military uh, to, to fulfill their, their purposes. Mainly a reconnaissance aircraft. Uh, you'll often see uh, some of the models that come out. Uh, they've got like a torpedo because it could carry a torpedo under the wing. Uh, or on the wing struts uh, and it could carry a couple of uh, bombs either side as well um, I'd originally got this because I've, I've been I've always really liked Japanese World War II aircraft um, not done anything for, for years and years uh, but the Pacific Group build has really woke my interest in the theatre again uh, and the Allied side of the aircraft as well but I've always liked Japanese aircraft because you can weather them up really well and they just I've just always liked the look of them uh, there's no way I could have a Kawanishi flying boat in 1 in 72 scale um, it, it'd be massive uh, and I've got another aircraft that I'm building at the moment uh, which you should see hopefully later in the week if it all goes well I've had to do a bit of refilling but we'll, we'll, we won't go down that road it was supposed to be that's just going to be what I call a pop-up video uh, so anyway uh, bought this because I wanted to uh, not so quickly tell you obviously Guadalcanal campaign uh, there's a couple of islands just uh, which were actually the, the, the one uh, Tulagi uh, and Gavoto, Gavoto and Tulagi. Tulagi had a seaplane base built by the Allies, um, or the Australians, and uh, they had Catalina Station there uh, shortly before the uh, the Japanese uh, started to sweep south. And uh, I'm not sure if if any Catalinas were destroyed, I can say on the ground, but you know what I mean, in the water, or whether they managed to fly them all out. I, I, I have read it, and I just can't obviously remember at the moment. But obviously then the Japanese had themselves a, a, a nice little uh, seaplane base. Uh, the, the base itself wasn't actually built by the, the military. It was built under contract by, is it the Sunlight Soap Company, who obviously were getting a lot of the palm oil and stuff out there. So they, they built a causeway and things like that um, and actually built it under contract for the, I believe, the Australian military to use. Or it could be the British military because it's actually it's a British mandated islands. Uh, part of the, the empire. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> aggressive. So, I was going to have my Mavis uh, as saying, you know, uh, oper operating out of Tulagi before the uh, before the uh, Allied uh, re reconquest of uh, Guadalcanal and, and obviously Tulagi things like that, uh, because a lot of them were destroyed on the ground along with some roof uh, seaplane uh, float planes. I believe the rules are on the box, uh, sorry, the rules are of the group build is it has to say on the box that it's from that time period, you know, the decals, it has to be appropriate for that time period. And I thought, well, it's a trumpeter, they never tell you, <laughs> Oper you know, they'll put, whether it's a 1 in 35 scale armour, whatever it is, you'll get a, a colour call out type sheet and there'll be decals in there but they never say what the unit is it's always generic and I thought well 
if the lads running the group build don't want me to, to, to enter it, not a problem. I'm just going to build it anyway because I just like the subject. Um, as I say, it's awakened my own interest in, the, in that theatre of, op of operations. And, um, you know, if it, if it wasn't part of the group build, that's not a problem. Uh, but for me, it was going to be a, a Mavis flying out of Tulagi uh, in 42. One big hitch, which I had noticed on the box, and it wouldn't have stopped me buying it, to be honest with you. Uh, it actually does say in the little let in, in the little letters where it tells you how many pieces and how the wingspan and all this type of stuff. It says decal markings for Japanese Naval Air Corps 43 to 45. <laughs> oh dear, that little black rain cloud following me around again. So I'm still building it, Charlie. I'm sorry, I can't. Obviously, I can't enter this, and I'm not going to browbeat you. I'm not can't browbeat Charlie or anything really, can we? But uh, just been trying for years. Uh, but yeah. Um, I'm still building it because I love the subject and I'm not going to stick it in the stash and then wait for 1943 part of the group build to come around. Uh, because even then, uh, it, um, it might say y Yokohama or Yokozuka uh, flying contingent or something, I remember it saying. Something weird. But yeah, uh, I mean, we've got... They haven't been able to st spell maritime right. Uh, it's mar maritimes. I managed to get reconnaissance right there. Anyway, I'm waffling. Uh, would you like to see a 1 in 44 scale uh, Kawanishi Type 97 H6K flying boat? What do you mean you won't? Well, you're going <laughs> to. Let's go down and take a look. Right, guys, sorry about the glare. Uh, if you didn't know what a Mavis seaplane looked like, uh, this is what they look like. I've always, I've actually preferred it over the Emily. Uh, I, I just think it's quite, it's like a bit, I know it's got four engines when I say it's going to look like a Catalina, but what I mean is a cat that has that real graceful look to it, you know what I mean? And some of the Dornier, German Dornier, and some of the Dutch Fokkers that were flying out of the Dutch East Indies, they had that same really nice look to them. Uh, and the good thing with these guys are you can, a lot of the, as we all know, a lot, especially the green paint for some reason, always seem to uh, disintegrate on the on the Japanese uh, aircraft. And it, I mean, I'm not going to heavily weather it up, as in chip it up, but uh, it will definitely be having some chips on it. Uh, but yeah, that's what a H and H six K looks like. Now, while I've got the the photo in front of us or the artwork. Um, it's, it actually had. I was looking at uh, looking at you know different stuff online. Like most Japanese aircraft, uh, multi-engined, it got a 20 mil cannon in the back, which was always uh, Allied aircraft qu quickly learned to uh, keep away from the 20 millimeter. Uh, and then it had. Uh, let's just have a look at the side. It might be easier to show you. Uh, blisters like the Catalina either side, uh, whereas. Uh, I think it was a 762, something like that. A uh, ground uh, machine gun was put in a blister either side, so they weren't sticking out. But obviously, you could roll the blister up and take it, and, and like the Catalina, and and fire from the from the waist position. Uh, they also had another one in the nose. Uh, I, I take it they used to pop her up, and um, because the the cutaway drawings I've been looking at, they actually had all the weapons exposed. But um, I've seen on many wartime photographs. Uh, they haven't been so um, I take it they just obviously pop, pop it up but there's a 762 we'll call it 762 I've probably got that wrong uh, in the nose and there's one in the dorsal position on the top which I don't think it will show us no. um, and another one on the top which again could do the same thing now this has no weapons including the 20 uh, the 20 mil in the back it's got nothing on there at all but at first I thought, oh, they're just thinking because it's 144 scale. Let's go back to the main view. Because it's 144 scale that they have they don't think it's worthy of it or something. And I was I was starting to get in my head, well, I'll drill this out and I'll do this and I'll do that. Uh, and then I kept looking at wartime photographs. And they were saying, when I was reading up on this, they were saying from about 43 to 45, yes, it did still carry on a reconnaissance role, but it was mainly used then as a... Uh, supply uh, doing supply runs to the different islands that the Japanese were occupying and uh, I suppose it makes sense you know um, you can 
you can get in there and out of you know you don't need an airstrip uh, so they could ferry small amounts of soldiers it, it had a crew of nine on its normal missions I don't know if that would still be the same case when it was doing supply runs uh, the commander which you can just see a little chap there that's from look at what I've seen on cutaway drawings there was actually a, a, a the, the pilot wasn't the commander the commander actually sat somewhere behind him and obviously you've got a navigator and a pilot and co-pilot and obviously gunners observers if you want to call them that um, but yeah lots of the black and white photographs I've shown you don't even see the 20 mil at the back so whether they were late to war and they'd literally stripped everything back to carry cargo or I have no idea so it looks like Trumpet has got that right so uh, let's go and open the box and take a look Uh, I have opened the box, as you can see, by the end. <laughs> but I've not got anything out, the, out yet. Um, so we'll have a look at the. I wasn't going to open the decals, but we'll have a quick look at the decals in a minute. Uh, the usual uh, black and white. There's no uh, photo uh, work, artwork and stuff. There's no. Um, there, there's no color uh, color. Uh, pull out as you can get normally with these again whether it's a scale they, they can't be bothered I've no idea but um, it's a small scale so you're not looking at a lot but it's still got a obviously you've got that really large wing now there's no engine detail whatsoever I saw a guy online uh, he'd managed to put a bit of engine detail just like the cylinders and whatever um, just to show that they were there so I'm, I'm going to probably do that just to you know um, because you put the spinners on separately so you can get to that uh, you do get a flight stand with them as you do on a lot of these smaller planes uh, I thought I might try and do my first C diorama with this and actually put it on a little base um, and there's a let's just hope all of these are actually fit and are strong. So I'll knock it off for a second and we'll open the. Oh, sorry, no, I didn't show the back there. Uh, oh, nothing like being prepared. Uh, again, we've just got uh, black and white. Uh, they do have the colour cord outs for Gunsei, Mr. Colour, um, and that, I think that's the only one. And. Uh, Again, classic hobby hobby boss. We've got we have got different decals and and uh, we've got the grey option, uh, but I'll be going for the classic green. I think just because I I think it'll look nice in that. Um, but there's nothing telling you telling you uh, the squadron or or anything, which is always a, I always think is a letdown with trumpeter stuff. They they. I've never had anything yet where they actually tell you what they what what you're actually dealing with, you know. So yeah, that's what you've got on the back. Now Trumpeter normally pack their boxes really well. You've seen the unboxing of the Lexington, everything's all nicely wrapped up. I've got I've had one in 35 scale kits where obviously more daintier bits are wrapped up and they put a bit of that foam packing over them. But obviously in 144 scale they can't be bothered <laughs> so we've got uh, we've got our clear parts just rolling around in fact we've got to be careful here that they're not uh, got the rear turrets caught itself in there nice one now I understand they're tiny tiny parts but you would think that they would have you know carried on and their normal way which is, is packing really well uh, we get our little flights flight stand as well. I thought that was really clear then and just put my finger straight through it. But <laughs> Right, we'll uh, put everything to one side and take a look. Right, as you can see, putting Gav's giant hand, that's still quite a, quite a wingspan. Now, as we all know, Japanese aircraft, had a, no matter how well made they were, had a tendency, because they didn't have self-sealing fuel tanks, uh, they tended to uh, to burn really easy, uh, and the, the Mavis was no exception. The Betty, 
uh, I can't remember the actual Japanese name for it, but the, the Betty bomber that had, I believe, a wet wing. So the actual fuel was stored like a more or less like a modern day airliner, I believe. Um, all that the, you know, the whole wing was the was the fuel tank more or less. Uh, now I don't know if that if that was the same here. Um, because I think on one of the cutaway drawings I've seen that they've got fuel tanks actually in the, the side here, just aft. Hey, look at that <laughs> nautical there, aft. But the rear of the uh, the cockpit or the cabin, whatever you want to call it. I might have got that wrong, um, but I believe so. Um, and that's why they tended to burn. Uh, there's a, a well that was shown a video on YouTube. YouTube of a Mavis uh, being shot down and uh, obviously the top wing all in flames and I've just put that in, you know, put, put um, Kawanishi H6K flying boat or Type 97 or Mavis, it don't matter, that, that you'll see that come up. Uh, we've got recessed panel lines, let's go in a bit closer. Well, hey, skydiving in. Right, uh, recessed panel lines, uh, you hear it a lot with people, 144, or not so much people, but people making comments, oh, they're tr like trenches or whatever. Um, I don't know. I'm just telling you these have got recessed panel lines. I'm quite happy with that myself. Uh, we've got all our our supports uh, for the wing supports and the float supports. Here's our floats. Um, I don't know if they got any panel line details, but I would have thought Trumpeter would have put him in if they had. Uh, this is the size of our put me finger grubby fingernail. That's the size of our propeller. As you know, one four four scale is often used for airliners. Um, you know the big the big airliners that people like building, obviously because of their size. Um, and I suppose this is no no exception. I've got another build on the go at the moment, which I'll show you. As I say, towards the end of the week, there's those the, the engines. Here we go. There's the engines, completely smooth, which is a shame, really. Um, I know it's a small scale, but it would have been nice to have some type of something in there. So I'll get the plastic card out and uh, and just try and make some some form of of representation of an engine. I think in there, uh, I just think it would look better. Uh, You can see faintly, uh, there's a civilian version out there, and you can see faintly, uh, which we're going to probably need some filling, uh, the windows for the pre, yeah, there they are, for the pre-war. Um, version. Again, I think all the all the panel lines are fine to me. I haven't got a problem with that. And that's it, I think, on that one. As I say, not a lot to look at at this scale. They obviously you're looking. I always think on these these guys, you're looking obviously more on the outside than you are on the inside. Let's get that back a bit. So. This is our number two, two of two. Uh, as you can see, very minimalist in the cockpit. <laughs> uh, I will, when I mock it up at some stage, I'll, this will be the next bill before I get onto the Lexington. Uh, Lexington is coming, by the way. Uh, it's just um, I like to know what I'm doing. Uh, I put, I write things down in a little book when I'm doing things like that, so I'm. Because I've got uh, obviously mental health problems, I lose I lose track of things, and I, I write them down in a little book so um, I know what I'm I'm going on to and what I want to do on that on that particular build. Um, so yeah, I'm just doing some research on the Lexington at the moment. So it's it's coming. It will be started next week. No, it won't be not started next week. The week after, uh, I would like to get this this Mavis built. And again. Not a huge amount to show you. Yeah, 
Got a few bulkheads here. I'll take that out the uh, the back of the uh, cabin or cockpit. I suppose you call it a cockpit if it's military. I suppose cabin if it's commercial. I have no idea. Anyway, that's that. Uh, take a quick look at these part. Uh, well, yeah, clear parts. That's our stand. Nothing's come off this to say it's been rattling around, but as I say, it's a bit a bit annoying. It's just like, oh, it's a tiny scale, so let's not bother. Uh, this is frosted out here because it will be green. I mean, the clear parts are really clear, actually. Um, again, I, I doubt you'll it would be clear if you could actually see them. Uh, again, put my finger behind there. I think that's... Uh, you can see some... Whether there's scratches, it probably are the way it's been flying around here. Yeah, I reckon that's some scratches here. Uh, flying around. Obviously the blisters and that. Again though, it's still still fairly clear, you know. Um, I won't be going to the the, the bother of, of spraying the correct paint on the inside. I think I'll probably just spray uh, areas black uh, or um, whatever colour I've happened to got, only because I, 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 you're not going to see anything. As I say, I think these type of builds are more on the out, you know, what's on the outside than on the inside. Is that, uh, where's my scissors? I'm going to have a quick look at these. I wasn't going to open these, but I am going to be building this soon, so make sure I put my, uh, sorry about the crispy. See, these scissors have seen better days. giant codes so that will be for a civilian version I take it <laughs> um, massive amount of uh, like obviously between the, the, the J and the B there's a, there's a, there's a obviously all the clear um, I'll be worried about that showing up but I don't know why I'm saying it because I won't, I won't be using it but uh, around the Hainomaru's uh, they look great. Um, yeah, that's about. There's not much you can say about it, really, is it? They're all. Uh, they're your decals. So, guys, that'll be another build. As I say, I am. I am doing stuff. You're just not seeing it at the moment. <laughs> But yeah, uh, we've got, uh, I will get straight onto this once I've finished the other one that I'm building at the moment. And as I say, that's just going to be a pop-up video. It's a build video. Uh, I'm just taking little snatches of film as I do stuff and, and uh, you'll hopefully see that towards the end of the week or the weekend or whatever. Uh, then I'm going to have a build of this. By then I should have got, I should have finally decided where I'm going with Lexington. And uh, we shall uh, get her on the slipway and, and start uh, progress on progressing on her, and, and we'll see that through as well uh, uh, to the to the completion. So thanks a lot. I hope that was of interest. Uh, as I say, don't, I know this is on the larger scale of 144 for aircraft. Yes, it's not an airliner, um, but honestly, 144 scale. Uh, there's a lot of fun to be had in in these little aircraft. Um, you know, they don't take a lot of room up. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've you know I, I, I think they're great little little kits. So look after yourselves. Uh, we what have we got coming up? Uh, we've got some Napoleonic videos, uh, twenty eight millimeter coming up also towards the end of the week, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So hopefully model build that I'm on at the moment that'll come up. Uh, twenty eight millimeter Napoleonics will be coming up. And then over the next week or so, whatever, <laughs> whatever I'm doing at the time, I really hope there'll be no more models coming in. I've got to stop pressing that button now. So thanks a lot and uh, yeah, catch you on another one pretty soon.